Welcome to the Real News Network. I'm Jess Lenore in Baltimore. On Wednesday, WikiLeaks released a partial secret draft of the Trans-Pacific Partnership, or TPP. The 12-nation agreement is being negotiated behind closed doors, and the release is one of the few times the public has been able to read any of it. If passed, the TPP would have serious ramifications for a range of issues, including intellectual property rights, internet freedoms, and prescription drug prices. Now joining us to discuss this is Kevin Zies. He's co-director with popularresistance.org. He's co-director of It's Our Economy, an organization that advocates for democratizing the economy. Thank you so much for joining us, Kevin. Happy to be here. Thanks for having me on. So, um, Kevin, even before this release, the TPP was described as a corporate wish list. Um, what, what new information have we learned from what WikiLeaks has released? Uh, we've learned it's as bad as we expected. The, the tra chapter that was released deals with intellectual property. And what was interesting about it was it really showed that the Obama administration was pushing for uh, agree the agreement in the direction of the transnational corporations more than any other nation. In fact, other nations are resisting. And many times the United States is isolated because it's so extreme and pushing uh, for corporate power. Uh, it's really quite amazing. Going further than he has even said that his administration would go under domestic law, so it will make things worse than Obama uh, says he would do at home. Uh, the agreement that they dealt with was intellectual property, and what, it, what that means is copyrights and patents and trademarks and those kinds of things. And what it shows is that uh, these corporate powers that are being given are going to make things much worse for the Internet. We're going to see our Internet freedom diminished make things much worse for health care. Prices will go up for both pharmaceuticals and for uh, medical procedures. Uh, and uh, much worse on uh, almost every aspect of our life where, where, where those kinds of powers play. And they play almost all, all through our lives. This will be corporate power gone wild. Um, and will be an agreement that you can see was written by the corporations. As you, as you know, for the last almost four years now, there have been negotiations. And throughout that time, there have been 600 corporate advisors uh, suggesting to the Obama administration you know, what needs to be done to make the, the agreement stronger from their perspective. So they've been putting in clauses and paragraphs and sections that favor corporate power. So this agreement, which will be over a thousand pages long, is going to be a totally uh, written by essentially corporate lawyers for the benefit of transnational corporations. And of course the public hasn't had any input in this. And I wanted to ask you about the, the arguments for the TPP. Um, supporters claim the trade deal will increase access to goods and services, lower prices, and benefit consumers. Does this release represent a blow to those arguments? This release represents a blow to the Obama administration and this agreement. I think it's much less likely it will pass. It's almost a lethal blow because the more people know about this agreement, the less they're going to like it. Uh, it's not going to make things more available. It's going to make things more expensive and more corporate profits on top of that. Plus, we know from previous agreements that these don't help our economy. Our trade deficit's gotten worse with uh, every agreement we've had. Uh, we've lost more jobs. It's not a job-creating opportunity. We lost 600,000 jobs with NAFTA. Uh, we lost uh, 100,000 jobs with the Korean trade pact. It was just a year old. Uh, and so this is going to be a job loser. It's going to be an undermining of our economy. It's going to make uh, many, many important issues, health care, Internet, and, uh, and other aspects, more expensive and more difficult for us. And uh, it seems like opposition is really, um, well, bipartisan opposition is really focused on this fast track process that the Obama administration is calling for. Explain what the ramifications of fast track would be and what kind of opposition are we seeing in Congress to this right now? Well, that's also what came out on Wednesday. It was a really double blow day, two lethal, near lethal blows to the, the whole process. Fast track essentially undermines the constitutional responsibility of Congress to be the, uh, the branch of government really responsible for trade. It shifts the power to the executive, the president, without much checks and balances from Congress. It really weakens Congress's role dramatically, even though the Commerce Clause gives Congress the responsibility. So it's a real undermining and turning on its head of the Constitution. Uh, what's interesting about the, the fast track is that uh, uh, back in 2012, the U.S. Treasury representative at the time, Ron Kirk, uh, said, we must have fast track. Those were his exact words. We must have it. Because without it, they can't complete the negotiations. They're trying to push these countries. You can see in these documents released by WikiLeaks, the United States is bullying countries to do things they don't want to do. Why does the country want to make health care more expensive for their people? Why do they want to make uh, uh, prescription drugs more expensive? Why do they want to make textbooks less available? They don't want to do any of that stuff. They're being pushed by the bully, the United States, to do that. And now the bully is not going to likely have fast track, means he probably won't be able to get this through Congress. It, why would they negotiate from a position of weakness? Now, the posi now they're strengthening their position. So these people who oppose 
this corporatization, we'll be able to say no to President Obama and his representative, the U.S. Treasury representative, Michael Froman, and, uh, and, and, say, and, and we can uh, see them standing up to, uh, to the U.S. empire. So that's a positive step. The opposition is deep, really deep. Uh, one let, there, were, there were several letters uh, sent to uh, President Obama by Republicans and Democrats. Uh, the total of 179 members of Congress have signed on to various aspects of these letters. The biggest one was from Rosa DeLauro and George Miller, circulated by them and signed by 151 members of Congress. There's 200 Democrats in the Congress. Three quarters signed on to this letter saying no to Fast Track. So if President Obama is going to pursue Fast Track, he's going to be doing it against his party. And of those people who signed, 28 of them would be uh, committee chairs if the Democrats took control of Congress. These are not just minor leaguers. These are not just uh, backbenchers in the Democratic Party. These are the leaders of the Democratic Party uh, saying no to fast track. So President Obama has a real problem there, and he's got a real problem with the, with the Republicans. There was a letter sent around by Michelle Bachman and by um, uh, uh, Walter Jones of North Carolina. You know, you had lots of Repub a couple dozen Republicans signing on to that. So you're seeing bipartisan opposition, almost a half of the Congress, we're on the way toward a half of the Congress saying they oppose fast track rating. That's only one of the, some of the problems. There's been other letters written complaining about other aspects of this. I don't see how it's going to get fast track. I, I, I think we are on the verge of actually stopping this horrible bill. I mean, it's not dead yet. People need to keep doing their work. There's a lot of great work going on by activists across the country. They need to keep doing that. They need to keep the pressure on because we are in a battle between the people and the transnational corporate powers. And if the people can win this battle, it will be a tremendous victory that can really show that the people do have power. That when we're organized, when we're mobilized, when we push, we can actually win. And if we can win this, then we can begin to turn around the whole discussion of trade, away from this rigged corporate trade uh, toward instead fair trade, uh, where the people and the planet come before profits. Right now, profits are dominant. That's the whole goal, is make money for the oligarchs, make money for the transnational corporations. Our goal is to change that and move it toward people and planet before profits. And I wanted to ask you more about that grassroots opposition. On the 19th, in just a few days, the uh, chief negotiators of all 12 countries are meeting in Salt Lake City. Um, what do activists have planned? Activists are ready. Uh, there's going to be a, a big uh, demonstration outside, and, and who knows if there may be some disruption inside. But there'll be a strong opposition from activists that'll be quite visible. Massive signs will be out there. They will definitely see that there's a, uh, Americans are opposed to this. And we've seen protests, by the way, across the country, across the country and around the world. Uh, Japan, major protests. I don't know how uh, their Prime Minister Abe is behaving the way he is. He's almost like a, a, a Washington, D.C. puppet. He's in, in favor of you know, militarizing Japan, dealing with them on uh, doing what the United States wants on nuclear energy and doing what they want on the TPP. Even though he ran, by the way, against the TPP, he's now pushing the TPP. So I, I don't know what the United States has in him, but he seems to be a U.S. spokesman. But the people are very opposed in Japan, Australia, New Zealand. We've seen multiple countries with protests, and the United States. We've seen protests consistently. Uh, you see a lot on Twitter, a lot on, on the streets. You see all sorts of activities going on, people saying no to this agreement. And the more people know about it, the less they like it. And that's what's so important about the WikiLeaks leak, because it really shows that we have good reason to oppose this. This is really a corporate trade agreement. President Obama is pushing the corporate line. He is trying to make this into a corporate trade agreement. We're seeing opposition in the Asia. We're seeing opposition in Latin America. One trade negotiator quit over this uh, because he thought it was going the wrong direction. Another legislature is saying they want to see um, uh, you know, the full text before they vote on it. Uh, and so you're seeing it all kind of unravel. This is, I think, a disaster for the Obama administration. And I don't see how they're going to push us through if we keep up our activity and keep the pressure on. Kevin Zeese, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. You can follow us at The Real News on Twitter. You can tweet me questions, comments, concerns at Jessel Noor. Thank you so much for joining us.